Hello! Viewmaster. Kind of sounds like a straight-to-VHS film from the 80s, or maybe a really crap Batman villain, but is in fact one of those things you hold to your eyes, and then you hold up to the light and you can see some slides. And sometimes they're in 3D. Um, stereoscope. That's the word we're looking for. And I imagine many of you will have come across them growing up. I don't know why I said many of you, all of you will have pretty much. They've been making them in pretty much the same format since 1939. So chances are, if you're a human being alive today, you've had a good chance to encounter one. And oh look, here comes one now! Here's one I bought earlier and I'm now sticking in front of a camcorder so you can see it too. That's the way this works. And if you've never seen one before, you've probably worked out how this works. Look through there, make sure there's some light going in there. Push this down to go on to the next slide, because it works in a pleasing rotary system that we'll get onto in a moment. Now this is a really old model, it's from 1946, a Model C, still works a treat. Uh, it's made out of Bakelite, which is kind of... Plastic before they perfected plastic is probably a good way of describing it. Um, tends to be quite brittle, but um, solid up until the point you break it, and then it goes off into little chips. Um, I remember the sort of 1980s versions, which were always made out of a very red plastic, and we would use them to look at still scenes from you know, just frames from Disney films or something. Frankly, they weren't very exciting even at the time, and probably aren't going to excite children who are used to iPads and things these days, but uh, we looked through them anyway, mostly because somebody's brother always had a big collection of them, which had been handed down to them from their brother, etc, etc. So, this is what you actually look at. I think this is an old one from 1961, I would have said, on the grounds it seems to say that in the front. It is of 101 Dalmatians, licensed from Mr Disney, and indeed is, well, basically some shots from the film with the little captions put below. Manufactured by Sawyer's Europe. Not for use in a Viewmaster stereoscope. Yes, because this is a 14 scene reel, non-stereo. Oh, means it's not in 3D. Uh, there is a workaround for looking through this, though. You just close one eye, uh, your left eye, and then turn it upside down and then look at the rest of them. It's really not particularly rocket science to actually look at them all. Um, I don't think we're really going to be able to get this uh, working particularly good through the camcorder, but we'll give it a shot. Right, pop it on the top, press the thing to load it, and... Oh my god, it's so beautiful! He said when he remembered to close his left eye. It says, because there's little captions at the bottoms on this one, relatively rare. Jasper discovered the frightened pups, hiding place, and moved in for the kill. Oh, Jasper, will you ever learn? Um, interestingly, it has captions actually on the screen, whereas usually they'd have them written on the thing here. Um, presumably because there's too many, because it's not designed for a stereoscope. Ah, I suppose if it's not designed for the stereoscope, you wouldn't be able to see them anyway, because they've designed it for a projector or something. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, give you some idea of what it looks like. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we are. You can just about make that out. I've got to pan around a bit. But uh, as far as I can tell, that is a load of Dalmatians with a cat in front. Jasper's evil legs coming to give him a good shoeing or something. Oh, Jasper. Jasper. Whatever happened to you, man, you used to be cool. Um, yeah, the thing that always surprised me when looking at him is how sharp it looks. Because, of course, it's not on a digital screen or anything. You know, it's a nice bit of... Uh, incredibly high fidelity film. So when you hold it up and it focuses well, which it pretty much always does because, you know, they know where your eye is going to be in relation to it, it looks really good. And the 3D effect is pretty fantastic. It's far better than you get from, like, the cinema with your bloody stupid spectacles on that reduce 20% of the light and give you a headache because they haven't fucking projected it in the proper bloody focus. Yeah, I'm not bitter at all. Um, so the, the, the effect isn't, you don't get that sort of thing where it's really poking out at you, but what is there is less pronounced, but very, very effective in its own way and incredibly sharp. <laughs> Now, something I didn't realise is, uh, well, when I was growing up, these were always pretty much kids' things, but actually, when they were first made, they were more for... had a lot of sort of travel stuff on it, um, especially in the 50s onwards, um, when they became popular, there was kind of a virtual tourism thing going on with them, where you'd get slides of, um, you know, Amsterdam or something, because it was far too expensive to actually travel there, and it wasn't until, like, the mid-60s it became more child-oriented, apparently. And here are some classic reels I've got, and the joys that could be discovered if only you could see them, which we will try and work on later. Um, here's Pinocchio and Snow White, yep, another Disney one, although intriguingly this 
aren't isn't full of um, scenes from the films. They're like remade, really beautifully remade, using little models, sort of plasticine ones. It looks really, really incredibly good. Um, here is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but uh, like a well, again a plasticine version, but not the Disney version. Uh, Sawyer's 1946. That one. It's an old one. Life with the Cowboys. Um, that's not a band, unfortunately. They mean actual cowboys, but uh, like modern day ones. Well, I say modern day ones. Modern day ones from 1951. Look, you've got rounding up the herd, applying the brand. Your turn next, partner. Yep, getting a bit broke back mountain with that one, maybe, but it's probably an interesting thing to see. The Ugly Duckling, another uh, children's one there. Little Red Riding Hood, yep. Now we get into the more um, touristy ones. We've got the Norfolk Broads, too. This is, in fact, a watery area right near where I live. Um, it's very odd to sort of find that in um, something that appears to be from America. Yeah, made in Portland, Oregon, in... Uh, oh, it doesn't say the year. That's disappointing. Oh, I'd really like to have known that. There's a typical sheds at the Hickling, Hickling Broad there. An ominous calm at the Barton Broad. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, that's about all there is at the Barton Broad, in my experience. Harbour and Town Hall of Great Yarmouth. Wow. Americans must have seen that and thought, thank fuck, I can't afford to go there. London Airport? Really? Real one? Well, just pictures of London Airport from 1957? Fair enough. What are you going to sell on that one? Princess Margaret's Wedding. Great. Wales too. This time it's personal. Um, just pictures of scenic Wales, I suppose. Ah, oh, this is a bit more interesting. A Bible story in three dimensions. Illustrated with Viewmaster full colour stereoscopic pictures of living characters. A Churchcraft Pictures Bible story. The Good Samaritan. Um, I think it has all the little uh, bits there. Yeah, Traveller Falls Amongst Thieves, etc, etc. We all know the story of the Good Samaritan, unless we don't. And the thing that intrigued me about this was, you would expect it to be crap, wouldn't you? You know, Churchcraft Pictures. We had a budget of 14 pence. And we got all our wives to dress up in wigs. But no, it's it's really well done. Seriously, genuinely impressed in how good it is. Um, Garden Flowers of Autumn. Gonna be honest with you, you could probably just wait till autumn and then smell them as well. Uh, Passion Play Oberammergau, Germany 1950 Part 2. That is intriguing. I don't actually know what this one is. Uh, Passion Play is uh, like... Uh, as in the Passion of the Christ, isn't it? Um, you know, Jesus being crucified and all that. So quite a lot of religious stuff, or at least on the ones I've got here. Um, Benares, India. I'm guessing that's pictures of India. Hopalong Cassidy, William Boyd and Topper. Oh, fantastic. A bit of a cowboy joy. He draws his six shooters. Uh, Hopalong Cassidy, that was a TV thing, I believe, wasn't it? A little bit before my time. Oh, now we're talking the canonization of Blessed Pius X from 1954. That's what the kids were interested in. They didn't want 101 Dalmatians and Terminator Genesis. They wanted the canonization of Blessed Pius X. I'm guessing this is another religious one, a specifically Catholic one, because it's the canonization of a of a pope? It, it, are popes canonised or only canons? Canon oh, I don't know, that's got beyond me, that one. Blackpool and the Illuminations in England. Here are some light bulbs near the sea. The coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. And another Oberammergau one. I've got a load more in a box, but there is a lot of repetition. But I've got to show you my absolute favourite. I had to buy this separately when I saw it on eBay. Because it turns out they weren't just made separately. It was uh, relatively easy to buy your own camera and have your own produced. And companies would occasionally do that for sort of promotional purposes, their own uh, dark ends to show you their products. And I came across Toto Perfection by Design from Toto Bathrooms. Incredibly made in 1999, but I would have thought this would be a sort of strangely outdated concept and, you know, just used for Ninja Turtles and things by then. It's just toilets. I shit ye not. It is literally a Viewmaster reel full of pictures of toilets. It doesn't get any better than that, and the person I ordered it from probably thinks I'm some crazy pervert. But never mind. Um, I looked up how many of these things have been made over the years, and they estimate about one and a half billion. That's an awful lot of them. And something I really like is that any of them any of these ever produced will work in any viewer ever produced. It doesn't matter if you've got a modern Dora the Explorer themed one or one from 1939, they will all show the same things. And in, uh, you know, these modern days of bloody digital file formats, they're changing or crippling with DRM every five minutes. It's amazing to think of something physical that hasn't really changed over the years and is in fact compatible with everything. Ah. Oh, and uh, interestingly, they're going into virtual reality. Apparently, they're currently working on an actual VR thing based on Google Cardboard. Um, don't know how that's going to work. It just 
sounds to me a bit like Google Cardboard and not really Viewmaster. But anyway, we've got to try and show you some of these things, and the method for that is a projector. Presenting the Junior Projector. Yes, it really is that old, and it's not in particularly good nick. There's lots of cracks and stuff on it, um, but it works well by having a light in here and then projecting through here that you focus using that. Um, it's not very technically advanced, shall we say, to say the least. These two wires connect directly to the terminals of the battery. And I don't mean the battery, I mean the bulb, because there is no battery. Let's start that again. These two wires connect the mains directly to the bulb. So as you can probably guess, when I got it, the bulb had pretty much blown up. Um, but I've sort of hacked it about and replaced it with a battery-powered Cree LED, which does a fairly good job. Um, which I shall now attempt to use to show you some of these amazing reels. Um, which is going to be a little bit fiddly, because these projectors aren't super powerful, to say the least. Um, in fact, if you've got a distance of 8 feet, apparently these will only project up to 16 by 14 inch um, bloody image. So you're not exactly going to be filling a wall. So that's, what, 2.4 metre distance and about 40 by 36 centimetres. Hey! No, I'm kidding, I didn't do that in my head at all. I'd written it down earlier. I'd never bloody remembered it. Right! Time for some beautiful slides. Ah, Toto Perfection by Design. And we start here with the Generation X Bathroom Carolina Suite. And what a thing it is. It kind of looks like it's escaped from the 1970s, and yet this reel was apparently made in 1999, which is quite an astonishment. Notice the red barrel in the corner there with a few um, cosmetics and things on. Red barrels, of course, are from video games, and if you hit them hard, they violently explode, and so aren't really a good thing to have in your bathroom. The Stress Buster Bathroom Carlisle Suite, and what a beauty it is. Your uh, stress is always busted if your toilet has many, many seats and what appears to be some kind of large telephone built into the back of it. And there's also some sort of squashed green thing on a blue mat and a sort of round thing in the floor. Is that actually a drain in case the thing floods? This is a very strange... I'm getting stressed just thinking about this. Your bathroom isn't working, lads. Ooh, skirted powder room Pacifica suite. What a beauty. And by beauty, I mean it looks like they're actually going to redecorate and have covered everything in cloths. I mean, wait, is this room finished? Why are there shoes on the floor? What? What? If you're going to demonstrate a toilet, at least put it in a bloody bathroom. It looks like they've literally installed it in the middle of a living room while somebody was moving in. And where better to keep your poisons than the luxurious Basin Pacifica Lavatory? Mm -mm -mm. Although, admittedly, this doesn't look much like a lavatory, I am beginning to wonder, actually, if uh, the mighty captions given away on here <laughs> actually correspond to what you're seeing. Because if this is a lavatory, I'm going to be honest with you, people are going to be shitting in your sink, and that's not a good thing. Ask anyone who's been to prison. Bold Lines Caruso Toilet Well, Bold Lines is one term for it. This is like early 70s. How on earth could they have still been selling this in 1999? Who were they selling it to? People who needed toilets that are completely undetectable to enemy radar? Good God. And is that a picture of Slender Man in the uh, picture frame there? Well, my plan to increase authenticity by taking photos of a projection of the reels is kind of floundering from the fact that they all looked shite, and so I'm now going to use an entirely different and much clearer method. Ah, beautiful Norfolk as seen in an indeterminate year sometime between the mid-50s and mid-60s, I would hazard a guess at. And this is the River Ant as seen from Ludden Bridge. Well, you can't actually see the River Ant because the River Ant is not a reference to the river. It's a creature. It is literally an ant that lives near the river. It's probably on the grassy bank there somewhere. Uh, it's called Edgar, still lives there to this day. And if you tickle its belly, it deposits a tiny little sample of moon rock and if you put that moon rock in your ear at midnight at Halloween, you can get little uh, ghosts appear that tell you about your own future. 
an ominous calm at the Barton Broad. And I love the way it says an ominous calm, as if something dreadful is going to happen, which is true, because dreadful things do happen constantly at Barton Broad. Uh, the main reason for that is, of course, the vacuous rom, which is some of a giant spider that lives underneath the lake. If you jump off a certain building, uh, you can go down there and attempt to kill it, but it's not a good idea. This one is marked as the Wide Open Hickling Broad, which sounds like some sort of bizarre sex thing, but is in fact some people near a boat. And the boat is near some other boats. Basically, quite a lot of boats going on in this one. A bit of naked wrestling in the bottom right, which is always nice, and one of the main features of the area. Typical sheds at the Hickling. These are sheds. Things are kept in them. Probably boats. Ah, water frolics at Potterheim. Um, the water frolics is actually a reference to the shit hat competition. Uh, this is, of course, a famous year where there was a horrible draw. Two women, you'll notice, they both have the same shit hat. And, uh, yeah, they kind of were both tied for first place. And, cut a long story short, they murdered everybody in this picture. Dutch landscape at Thurnmouth. Well, it's not really a Dutch landscape, it's just got a windmill in it. Sticking a windmill in something does not actually make it Dutch, in no more than you could make your house Dutch by sticking a fucking clog on the roof. Ah, the harbour and town hall at Great Yarmouth. And somebody's washing line, for some reason. VisitNorfolk.co.uk describes Great Yarmouth as a famous family holiday destination, bursting with fun things to do, arcades, rides and attractions stretching along the fabled Golden Mile and the huge expanse of pristine beach. Whereas locals, when asked to describe the place, usually just say, That's a fucking shithole, henter. Red Riding Hood leaves to visit Grandma. Wolf spies Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood tells Wolf her destination. Wolf crashes through Grandma's fence. Red Riding Hood sees Wolf in Grandma's bed. Woodcutter hears child cry for help. Woodcutter drags Wolf into forest. <laughs> 